Our next candidate uh, is Bill Trumbull, who is from the center of Oregon. Welcome, Bill. Good and I morning, have a, and thank you. And I have a, a map that shows where you're at, which is really interesting because uh, those of us on the west side always considered Ben to be eastern Oregon, but uh, it's it's amazingly in the center of the state, and you have half the state, actually more than half the state, to the east of you. Um, and you're in a very interesting district because um, it's roughly roughly shaped like a donut surrounding Bend. <laughs> so they, they put Bend in its own district, uh, and then they made the surrounding area um, another district. And I think it's the only district in Oregon that's shaped like that. Um, I, I can understand the logic um, uh, for doing that, but it does create a, an interesting shape. Well, when you try to set about 60,000 roughly people in a district, uh, they obviously took 60,000 out of Bend, and then to get the next 60,000 swept a fairly large circle around, and that uh, created this unusual donut. But uh, it's uh, an interesting district of great people, and so I'm looking forward to an opportunity to represent them. And was what I said earlier accurate that uh, there's been an influx of, uh, of people and that's why your numbers are greater than like Megan's district? I think that you're absolutely right. Uh, we have seen a, a large influx of people. Uh, many have come from California. And so I'm hoping that this portends a democratic increase and with the excitement and energy we've seen in the races this year, I think this may be the year to see things change in our district. We've been Republican for 18 years, uh, so uh, we're, we're very hopeful. And what's cool about your race is that you are one of the few uh, districts in the state where you actually have choices on both the major parties uh, and, a, and a choice in the fall from the results of the primary. That's so, correct. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. We have two Democrats and two Re Republicans running. And so uh, this primary is really important to us. Um, do you also have other races on the ballot, like county commissioners? We do indeed, yes. So uh, so the non-affiliated have a, a reason to vote, um, but they will not see your name on the ballot. So. Uh, you also had a greater, you have a greater percentage of Democrats uh, in your county than, than Megan does, which I, I think reflects the influx of people coming in. And so it makes a, a, a narrower margin that you need to make up with from the non-affiliated. Um, have you started reaching out to the non-affiliated or are you focusing on the primary and going to do that later? I'm focusing on the primary right now That's because smart. it's a closed primary. Only Democrats can vote. Uh, for Democrats. And we're about 30% Democrat, 30% Republican, 30% non-affiliated, 10% everything else. So right now, concentrating on the uh, Democrats. Uh, but uh, I have about 3,700 votes to make up because there are more registered Republicans, but with 30% of the population non-affiliated, we'll be concentrating largely there after the primary. So your district is in the center of the state. You have a unique set of issues because of the explosive growth. Uh, uh, what, in, in your district, what are, you, what are the top issues that people are talking to you about? Two stand out. One is health care, and I'm a a uh, strong proponent of health care for all. And the other is PERS, the Public Employee Retirement System. And the legacy debt that is uh, weighing down Oregon's economy. And so I have a specific solution for that that I'm proposing. And that is to raise the lowest in the nation excise tax on buy the glass beer and wine sales. Not what you buy in a grocery store, not what you buy at the liquor store, but buy the glass beer and wine sales. So if we would raise a tax that hasn't changed in over 40 years, 
to be one half of the national average, then we would bring in three quarters of a billion dollars a year and we could solve this legacy debt in 20 years. Well, that sounds cool. Uh, have you talked to other legislators or is that your idea that you'll be moving forward with? It's, a, it's an idea I hope to carry to Salem. Uh, if, of course, uh, I don't uh, succeed in the primary, then uh, I will give uh, my challenger all of that information and ask that they carry it there because I think it's a, it's a really doable solution. And many people have talked all around the issue, but very few people are offering an actual solution. So tell us about yourself. What, uh, what prompted you to run? Well, over the years, I would say that national events got my attention, but uh, local issues really made me throw my hat in the ring. So I'm a, a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I'm a PhD scientist. Uh, I've had a career in research and teaching and university administration. I've been a, a dean of College of Life Sciences and Agriculture. I've been a provost and vice president for academic affairs. Uh, and I retired as a senior vice president at an environmental college. Now, these are, are great experiences uh, because while I was uh, a dean, I was also appointed to uh, the New Hampshire State Conservation Commission. I was appointed to the New Hampshire State Land Use Board. And so in that capacity, I've written and reviewed legislation for the state, and I've written legislation for the Federal Farm Act, Farm Bill. And so I think that that gives me an experience most of my uh, competitors don't have, and it would let me go to Salem and be effective, I think, uh, in actually taking legislation writing it, submitting it. I know the process. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to doing that. Cool. Um, uh, and <coughs> were you active in 2016 in, the, in that election? I was active uh, in supporting others. Uh, this is the first time I have ever run for an office. So uh, watch this space and you can see in real time <laughs> the interesting... Uh, events and, and probably mistakes that I make as well. Well, I, I'm hoping that your, um, uh, your campaign is run uh, uh, positively. Uh, we just sent out a message here in House District 32 asking people, at least the Democrats, to be civil uh, so that the electorate can base their decision on data and not um, uh, sleazy politics. Uh, I, I completely agree. One of the points I put on my literature is that I believe we need a return to truth and civility in politics. Uh, if you can't talk to someone, you don't have a chance of getting the information to let you make the best decision. So, yes, it's really important to me. And uh, I'm a scientist. And so uh, I need to work off of evidence and truth and the best decision that's possible. Wow, that's a <laughs> basing decisions on data is a tough road to hoe. <laughs> I, I gotta jump Probably. in just for a second. Do you feel the Please. burn? I, I just wanna know. Do I feel the burn? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I was Good enough. a Bernie supporter from quite a ways back. Um, uh, Bessie, before I, I plunge forward, do I have any questions so far for Bill? Yeah, there's actually a lot of them, all of that were asked of Megan and more. Um, so well, let's start in. All, all right. right. Well, one of them, um, I, um, what issues um, are you actually hearing from the voters? PERS uh, is a big issue. Everyone wants to know how we're going to solve it, not just talk around it. Uh, gun rights is an issue. This is a rural community. Uh, I will tell you, I'm a gun owner. Uh, I even have a uh, concealed carry permit. But I'm a strong believer that we have to have common sense gun laws. Uh, 
we should ban assault rifles. We should ban large capacity magazines. We should see that guns are not in the hands of people who shouldn't have them. And then support the Second Amendment, which I think is, is absolutely fine. I just don't buy into the hysteria that people are coming to take my guns away from me. Uh, other issues, uh, the environment. We're an area where people love recreation. Uh, and so I believe in uh, access uh, to our public lands. I don't want to see them sold. I don't want to see them given back to the state because the state's not in a position to financially maintain them. Uh, but I do want to see access for everyone. Uh, education is a really big issue. I've toured uh, the schools in this area with uh, uh, teachers uh, to find out what the issues are. And I think there are a number of things that we can do for education. We can give, stu we can give teachers the option to validate what the students have learned before they move on. And there are ways to do this by, uh, oh, perhaps uh, doing problem-based learning or what we call flipping the classroom where you provide the information first and then use classroom time to uh, validate that actually students can master that information and use it. And we need a new assessment system for the state. Uh, We've seen for years that this constant testing, quantitative testing, isn't working to solve our issues. So I'd like to write the legislation for a peer-reviewed assessment process of K through 12. And this comes from uh, a mechanism used in higher education. Uh, I've got 40 years of doing that, and I can write that legislation, so I'd like the chance to do that. Uh, I better stop now, although there are a <laughs> whole lot of other issues that I, I can talk on. But let's see if we can get to the rest of the question. Uh, well, then following the education about the how about universal pre-K and daycare, as well as two free years of college yes, and I technical support, school. I support that. Uh, I'm a great believer in uh, CTE or career and technical education. I think it gives uh, an option. To, to students and what they want to do. Not everyone wants to go on to higher education. Uh, two years of community college education should be free. And one way to approach doing that is to use any increase in marijuana taxes beyond what was uh, received last year. And I say beyond that because what was received last year is already spoken for. Uh, so let's take the new money and let's dedicate that to education, primarily personnel in education, just as we would dedicate uh, this beer excise tax by the, by the glass excise tax to PERS. So that's kind of, I guess, an answer to the question about what would you try to get marijuana funds to pay for investment in your district? Yes. Is that the, the education? It would be. I would, I would ask that we dedicate anything, any taxes raised for marijuana beyond what was received last year to be dedicated to school personnel. So what about green energy and infrastructure? Excellent question. Uh, green energy is growing faster now in our part of the high desert than any of the extraction-based jobs. So I'm an enormous supporter of green energy, and those jobs will be perfect here. We're an area with a lot of sunshine. I have solar panels on my house. I just ordered a a fully electric car. Uh, I'm a believer in this. I taught in an uh, environmental college for a number of years. Uh, so I believe in climate change and the need to fix it. And we can't fix it by calling it fake news. So green jobs and green energy are a terrific solution for my district, and I think for a lot of Oregon as well. 
And you did mention part of what Randy had asked about public land access, um, but I, I don't know if I heard you say specifically things about timber, the, the timber industry. Uh, let me address that specifically then. Uh, what I propose is that we need to rewrite uh, the Oregon Products Act. It's about 50 years old. It uh, hasn't been changed much. Many environmentalists say that it's the weakest in the nation. Uh, I think forestry should be allowed on public lands, but it has to be done in a sustainable manner. And so what I propose is that we rewrite the Forestry Act so that it is more, the Forestry Products Act, excuse me, so it is more uh, sustainable. Many people will say that the harvest of forests puts more CO2 in the air than any other industry in the world. And that's because there's a cost to putting CO2 in the air when you harvest and burn slash piles. But there's also a cost when you cut down trees and they are not absorbing carbon and they're not holding carbon or CO, uh, holding CO2 out of the atmosphere. And so I propose uh, that we relook at the Oregon Forest Protection Act. Although I think forestry built Oregon, it's like coal mining. It's not coming back at the same levels as green energy. Uh, what separates you from your Democratic opponent? Mostly a level of experience. Uh, I've already mentioned that I've, I've written and reviewed legislation for state and federal uh, laws. Uh, I have been a university administrator, second in command, uh, with very large budgets. I've uh, been able to uh, eliminate a $4 million budget, uh, one of the uh, schools where I was in charge, and uh, uh, so I have a lot of experience both in terms of, of education policy, budget policy, writing laws, uh, and in community service. Uh, everywhere I have lived, I've been involved in community service because I think it's important. Uh, I've been on town water boards. I've been president of... Uh, uh, the Grass River Heritage Foundation, which did uh, uh, education and, and historical preservation, built parks. And I've also been president of the Homeowners Association in the town of Redmond, Oregon, where I live now. So I have a background that has been in service, uh, has been in serving people for making things better across the uh, state and even across the nation. So I think experience is the biggest difference that we're going to see among the candidates for this office. And there's two final questions from uh, Randy Roberts. And it is, uh, uh, one, he asked Megan, have you and college? as well as what is your selling point to independence? Oh, wait, he has one more, and do you fish? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with the last one. You cut out during the first one. So, yes, I fish. Uh, I'm a fly fisherman and a spinner, and uh, everywhere that I can fish, I have fished in Oregon. That's part of why I live here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this behind me, but there's a little fish on my afghan uh, that's because my wife thinks that's the most important thing going for me. Uh, now, could I have you repeat the first two parts of that question? Uh, well, one is about volunteers that are high school, college age. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm concentrating on a primary, as you know, that uh, will be resolved on the 15th. Uh, but I have uh, a number of friends and a number of contacts within uh, Central Oregon Community College and a number of contacts within uh, the new Oregon State University being built in Bend. And so I have every intention 
and hope of support from the university students, community college students, and I'm going to ask them to uh, be active volunteers in my campaign going forward. Last and the other was, what is your selling point to independence? Uh, if you have read, uh, as I have, the platform of the independent party, uh, there are I am probably the person who is most in line with all of those platforms of the independent party, with maybe one exception. Uh, and so for those people uh, who are independents, you're going to find that I agree with your platform, we're going to be pretty much on the same page, and I listen to everyone. I want all the information before I make a decision. And our previous or our current representative for this district, who is not going to run this time, really could have done a better job of meeting with people in this district beyond Salem. And so my promise is that I'm going to meet monthly in the district with everybody who wants to come and talk with me. So independents, non-affiliated, Green Party, Libertarians, Republicans, and Democrats, I'd like to meet with you, I'd like to hear you, and then I want to represent everybody. Well, those are a great set of questions. Um, is there anything you'd like to say in closing, Bill? Please go to my website, which is www.billtrumbull.com. That's Bill Trumbull, one word, or to my Facebook page, which is Trumbull for Oregon. And so please just uh, try to get to know us. There isn't much time before the primary, so I would ask you to send your ballot in. Whomever you're voting for, please vote, and I hope you'll consider voting for me. Thank you so much for your time today, and good luck on your, on your uh, campaign. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, and uh, thank you for inviting me to be with you today.